like to express my um, appreciation for our ASCA committee to organize this special session for teacher education. And uh, today my topic, actually based on our research during the past five years, several projects, and the title is uh, Dynamics of Teachers for Knowledge and from the culture start by giving theoretical perspective. And I, I will briefly show you something about the research background, what we have done during the past, uh, past five years on teacher education, especially on teacher knowledge. And uh, then go into my own research, uh, the dynamics of teacher practical knowledge, what other scholars have done in this research field and some methodology and uh, my findings and some conclusion and implications. Um, yeah, this is uh, some major projects we have conducted in the past five years. And uh, I think we can easily find uh, the, the first of three projects is uh, conducted by my supervisors in China and also in Finland. And the next two projects are uh, actually one is a funding, another is a scholarship um, for my PhD research. And you can easily find that uh, here's a very important keyword in my research and projects, that is teacher. Uh, but why teachers? Why I focus my research on teacher for uh, the past several years? I think most of you might be know this famous book written by John Heidi and published in 2008. It is a very fantastic book because it is um, a kind of meta, meta analysis and uh, very strong evidence-based uh, analysis about the holy grail of teaching and learning. What is the secret of successful teaching and the learning and also educational reform? And John Hattie told us that that is teacher. Teacher is a holy, grail, a holy grail for educational reform, for teaching, for learning, for students' achievement. And I want to uh, give you an example of what happened in Finland nowadays. And uh, the National Board of Finnish uh, Education, we have confirmed a new curriculum reform and it will be conducted in the very August, in this year, two months later. And this new national curriculum reform uh, proposed a new idea that is a phenomenon based curriculum or phenomenon based learning. What does it mean? It means more comprehensive curriculum, more integrated. There's no boundaries of subject matter, and the teachers should teach uh, uh, many different kinds of knowledge in one certain class. So, under this context, we have uh, more and more requirements to our teachers, especially in Finland. So what should our teachers do? In my opinion, I think the teachers are not only be a kind of curriculum implementer who just implement what the government or uh, National Board of Education tell the teachers to teach or to do, rather, our teachers should be the curriculum makers. They are the creators of the curriculum. They are the makers of education. So that is why I put my research focus on teacher practical knowledge. Because teacher, they need practical knowledge in their practice. They need to learn all the time during their working times, their work and life, instead of what they have learned in university or normal colleges. It's not enough for them to teach in nowadays. So actually in teacher professional development research, theory and practice composed of an enduring tension for many, many years, I think started from John Dewey, has discussed about this dilemma between theory and practice, and also talked by Donald Sean how to uh, filling the gap between theory and practice for professionals. And the visible teachers' uh, teaching knowledge and uh, their professional landscape is manifested in their teaching activities and actions. While their practical knowledge, like the roots here under the ground, is guiding teachers' teaching. 
thinking and action all the time, which is more important than the visible part. Okay. So I define teacher practical knowledge, TPK, as a kind of knowledge outcomes of, te uh, of teachers' professional experiences and their reflection on those experiences from, of, and for their authentic educational practice. This, this is my definition to TPK in my research. And uh, teacher practical knowledge actually was perceived as tacit, implicit, personal, and very hard to capture by researchers. So we can easily find that teachers' discourses, gestures, their uh, facial expressions during the teaching activities, but how can we find the hint of teachers' practical knowledge and how can we find this changing process? So that is, uh, that is my question. In order to answer this question, I made a literature review here and I divided the previous research on TPK into four different orientations. This orientation actually connected to Harvey Musk's uh, theory between knowledge and interests. Every kind of knowledge has a specific interest of researchers. So if we look at the uh, research outcomes by different scholars, we can find the, their academic interest behind their arguments. So I just divided the previous researches into four orientations. The first one is analytic rational orientation. That means to identify and evaluating, even evaluating teachers, TPK. Use some rubrics, <coughs> use some uh, uh, test, something like this, and we can uh, categorize teachers' practical knowledge into different types, like knowledge about students, knowledge about teaching, knowledge about identity, something like this. And uh, the second orientation is individual experiential. Uh, this orientation actually pioneered by Jean Claudini and Michael Connolly in Canada in 19... 80s, I think. And they just uh, reveal and interpret what teachers really think and what did the teachers interpret themselves rather than from the perspective from our researchers' perspective. So they use some case study and narrative inquiry to uh, dig out teachers' understanding on their activities, teaching activities. And the third orientation I would like to call it Praxis Reflective uh, is more close to action research, proposed by uh, Stenhouse in 1975 and uh, developed by uh, Copland, Mies, and Little in 1980s and 1990s. Uh, the last one is sociocultural. This orientation uh, has a very dialectical view and uh, uh, the positionality between researchers and teachers are very uh, different from the, the above three orientations. And we have a paralleled narratives among macro, micro, and meso level of teacher thinking and their knowledge. Okay, so these are four orientations. Uh, but this map, I think, is more understandable for us to look at the developed trace here. I put the four orientations into a matrix. The horizontal dimension here is the research content, which means analytic or holistic. And the vertical dimension is the research pers uh, perspective, which means static or dynamic. So we can put these four uh, previous research orientations into this four parts of the matrix. Uh, matrix. Uh, we can find that the social cultural orientation is both holistic and dynamic, and which could be provide a rich resource for me to study the dynamics of TPK. So I would like to choose this pers perspective in my research. Okay, initial puzzle. Uh, at the beginning, I don't have a very clear research question. Um, but I have ver very ambiguous puzzles here. In social scientific research, we have two kind of uh, approach. 
The first one is causal research, and the second one is mechanical research, which is proposed by John Elster, very famous French social scientist, in his book Explaining the Social Behaviors. He proposes two kinds of uh, research. And the first one, uh, based on the principle if then, or when then. So we can only find the resources or elements of our topics. But the second one, focus on the mechanisms, what really happened from A to B, rather than when A then B. And I try to connect it to Vygotsky's um, Explain, uh, uh, Vygotsky's methodological interpre interpretation on psychology. Uh, I think it's in the volume four about the method of psychology, the research method. And he proposed a two kind of uh, research uh, orientation. The first one is descriptive, uh, which means a kind of uh, traditional, just describe what happened and elements. Uh, but the second one, because Vygotsky, thought that this is very important for us. This is a principle of explanatory, explanatory uh, principle. We need to find, dig out the mechanisms of developmental process. So that is, uh, uh, I think, uh, very close to my idea and also very close to Elster's idea about the mechanisms and mechanical research in social science. So my initial questions are how to unpack the interactive process among various sources of TPK and how to describe this kind of generative mechanism of TPK. And uh, then I find cultural historical activity theory is a um, useful perspective for me to analyze my data and to generate theory. I will talk about it later in the methodological part in my presentation. And uh, cultural historical activity theory um, is well known by uh, the book written in 1987 by Yu Yuan Strom, but most of researchers just uh, use the triangle model, and it is too simple for chart. So we have to go back further to Marx, Engels, and Spinoza. And they give me some uh, theoretical foundations to think about what is social, cultural, historical means to me and means to TPK. And then Spinoza's discussion about free will and agency is very important for teachers, uh, professional agency, because they need to be a curriculum maker, curriculum creator, and they need to generate their own practical knowledge. And then Vygotsky and Vygotsky in school, I regard Vygotsky more that, uh, like a methodologist rather than a psychologist. I think this part is more important, at least for my research, the methodological thinking of Vygotsky. Uh, of Vygotsky. Yeah. And then uh, chart some keywords, activity system, mediation, contradictions, and historicity. These are um, keywords in my research. I used it many times in my projects. So, uh, it is the basic viewpoints of my research. I think it could be uh, uh, more easily to be summarized here. The nature of the dynamics of TBK is the interaction among different activity systems and the teachers under the help of artifacts visible or invisible based on the rules and division of labor in certain communities negotiate their meanings with, the, uh, with other activist system, then create a third space, I, I call it knowledge space, between the working space and the problematic space. So the TPK just embedded and generated in this third space. So that is what my basic viewpoint. Uh, the research questions. Uh, first one about situations. What are the contradictions teachers usually meet in their workplace? Uh, in which context? What kind of nature and characteristics of this uh, specific situation? And uh, the effectiveness and limitations of teachers' problem solving under the specific situation? And what is the relation 
between different situations and different problems. And second question about mechanism. How do teachers generate and transfer and develop their practical knowledge in their workplace? This is a core question in my research, and I, uh, we can find some elements uh, from chart here, like subject, object, artifacts, rules, division, and labor. And I was trying to model this mechanism. And Davidov uh, gave me much inspiration, uh, inspiration on this conceptualization modeling. If we want to have a theoretical thinking, if we want to have a theoretical abstraction from our research. And I think that is the most uh, important thing for academic research, if we can model something from concrete to abstract, and then go back to concrete. A third question about outcomes. What kinds of uh, practical knowledge do the teachers generate? If there are any evidence, uh, representations, and the last one is some implications. I want to expand my uh, research to some theoretical discussion, uh, like how to understand TPK, uh, what is the nature of TPK, and how is uh, teacher okay <laughs> teacher professional <laughs> development possible? That is a more theoretical question. Okay. Okay, methodology. Uh, I don't think I have enough time to, to, to illustrate detail about my methodology, but I still would like to show you some uh, pictures here. Uh, Crowley divided the methodology into four levels, and all kinds of social scientific research should cater in a congruence among these four levels. Like, if you have a certain epist epistemology, you should have a, a congruent theoretical perspective, and then congruent methodology and then congruent methods. Otherwise, it would be very weird. Like if I have a, a social constructivist epistemology, but I use a theory perspective from... Postmodernism. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's really weird. So you have to keep the inner congruence among these four levels. So I choose this here. I, 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 I don't want to explain more, but... You can see these four levels. Okay, I choose the constructivist grounding theory approach um, to design my research and uh, collect data and, and analyze my data. Actually, grounding theory was built in the 1970s and uh, they have different strands, more objective, more constructive, or neutral. Uh, I choose a constructivist uh, part of grounded theory. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, most of researchers just use grounded theory as a data analysis tool, just to get some themes from the data. But actually, grounded theory is a whole system. You should start it from the beginning of your research, to design your research, to have a theoretical sampling, and then reframe your design and analyze and go back is a uh, zigzag process. Okay, I, I think I need to skip this part and uh, directly go back to this map. Uh, this map, I think, uh, could summarize my research process. I call it generating knowledge in qualitative research. Uh, yeah, how to make a dialogue between theory and uh, my empirical data and how to generate knowledge between these two parts and how to do theoretical sampling and how to um, generate knowledge. Yeah. Okay. So this is the initial findings. I have uh, uh, three models for t uh, dynamics of TPK and in different contexts and situations. This situations are very common, I think, uh, um, in China, but I don't know whether in other countries. First one is classroom teaching, another one is lesson study, and the last one is school-based research. And I will uh, show you the third case, the clinical model. Uh, first, I, I used uh, the multi-level historical analysis proposed by Sylvia Scrapner. Uh, her gorgeous article about Vygotsky's use of history. 
have multi-level uh, analysis of historicity, how to dig out the contradictions behind the conflicts in front of us. And then uh, I choose the several typical situations from my data and use these four level contradictions to make a dialogue between the data and the theory. So the dynamics, I think I, I need to skip, yeah. The primary contradiction I analyzed, it, 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 it is, uh, it was at the f uh, first uh, session of teacher research in the school, in this case. We have primary contradiction, the school governance, and the needs for teacher professional development. It is just like the uh, value and use value. It's in the uh, one single element, contradiction. And what happened then, secondary contradiction, call it double bind. And uh, here is a episode happened in the middle part of our uh, research. We can see the last sentence here, how could we do? When every participant in this research group didn't have any ideas to break out, to find a way, and they said that, how could we do? So here is a, a, a double bind. Here is a starting point for analysis, the question, the problem. And then, the third level of contradiction, we can find different objects and the different mindset. Here, I, I, I would uh, like to say something more about germ cell, uh, because we mentioned it yesterday, I think. Um, I analyzed and uh, proposed the germ cell. What is the most important contradiction for teachers, school-based research, why they don't know uh, how could they do and how could they cooperate with uh, researchers from universities and why they are so resistant to this kind of research, school-based research. I call this journal cell is a culture of doing and a culture of thinking. So this, it, actually it is a kind of mindset between the researchers and the teachers. So what is a germ cell? I just to add a note. It is an abstract con uh, concept that includes and makes visible the inner contradiction and possibilities for managing it. So for example, in Marx's uh, Marx analysis of capitalism, commodity is a germ cell because it was identified um, and carried the inner contradiction between the use value and exchange value. And it is the smallest part of the situation by showing the relationship invisibly. And also, Davidoff proposed uh, this, uh, sorry, Davidoff discussed this germ cell, this concept, in the method of ascending from abstract to concrete. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, what really. Uh, happened in the third contradictory part of my research. And what is the mediation? What is the artifacts which facilitate teachers to generate and to change their mindset, to generate their practical knowledge? I just listed two major mediations here. One is dialogue and another is reflective journals. Uh, dialogue, I use Buckling theory to analyze uh, the teachers, the five, uh, seven primary school teachers and the one researchers from university, their dialogue, to analyze their learning mechanisms. And the reflective journal, um, this is a very important tool for teachers to reflect their changing and their development in the process of learning to do research and cooperate with university researchers. So writing actually is a way of knowing. It's not just to write, it's also to know something, to, uh, to, to reflect intellectually and emotionally. Okay. Okay, so the last one is uh, 
fourth level of contradiction. It's not actually, to be honest, it's not very clear because we need to um, examine the teacher system with some neighboring systems like their community, the parents or uh, educational administrators like this, but in this case, it's not very clear. So, outcomes. Um, what did the teachers really learn from this cooperation with university researchers? And by doing research, doing the school-based research, I, I used the, uh, the framework from uh, Anderson and Hurry in 1997 to examine the teacher's outcome of their practical knowledge. And we have five dimensions, the uh, catalytic, democratic outcome, uh, process and the dialogic. And we can find that they have a very good performance at the dimension of dialogic and uh, democratic. So that is very important way for teachers, professional learning, if we could create a safe space, a democratic space and environment. Okay, some conclusions. Um, I just list some main points here. The first one is DPK is situation specific. Uh, I think uh, previous researchers also discussed about this viewpoint, but what does this situation specific really mean to us and what this kind of situation specific could instruct us to reframe the teacher training program? So. The, third, uh, the second one is three types of model, the embedded, expanded, and cyclical model of dynamics of TPK. And uh, the development of TPK comes from the historical contradiction and the current conflicts. And the historical contradiction is very important. Just as I, I, I analyzed in the previous slides, the historicity of uh, teacher as researcher, it's not just the conflicts, what happened in the case school, but it has a very long historical accumulation. And this kind of historically accumulated contradiction embedded in the case study. And our researcher need to dig it out. And dialect of uh, natures of TPK, personal and public, it should be public. And it could be collective. And internal and external, something else. And implications, uh, some practical implications for insert teacher learning and development. Um, I think the most uh, tricky problem for teacher training program nowadays is the top-down model. We just uh, introduced the theory to the teachers, or we just use this kind of lecturing way to teach our teachers what should you do, what you can do, use a new teaching method and just a copy it into your classroom. But it is not the real way for teacher learning and development. And then the methodological implication between grounding theory and theoretical abstraction chart. I think we have a kind of tension uh, between grounding theory and chart. Um, grounding theory, uh, claimed a, genera uh, a kind of generation of knowledge or even generation of uh, theory. This is very similar with Vygotsky's uh, viewpoint about uh, theoretical abstraction and uh, also ascending from uh, abstract to concrete. So I think uh, this is a kind of uh, methodological implication in my research. And thank you. Thank you.